Deadline day is fast approaching and we have updates after updates after updates that have broken throughout the weekend. So my friends, let's discuss the latest news surrounding attacking players and player exits as well too. So hit that like button, share your thoughts and opinions and without wasting any more time, we start with Lukaku first and finally, he is now set to move on loan to AS Roma. I can't help but feel like Serie A have won yet again as they've been able to sign Lukaku on another loan deal and in regards to this loan deal in particular, there are no options to buy at all. It's a straight loan deal. The figures are set to be around 8 million in terms of a loan fee. Lukaku is set to reduce his wages but Roma are set to pay around 7.5 million euros of course to complete this loan move. Now we have exercised some clauses in this deal before allowing Lukaku to leave. We have actually exercised a release clause set at around 37 million euros. I think this makes a lot of sense so let's see if he does have a successful loan spell with Roma. If any clubs are interested in signing him for the following summer, we don't have to negotiate, you know, we don't have to waste any more time. You can negotiate directly with Lukaku and hopefully be cash in straight away. And we have also exercised another clause where, again, if Lukaku is not able to find a permanent move following the end of his loan spell, if he returns back to us, he is set to receive significantly lower wages as currently he is earning around 325,000 a week. So in terms of this deal, I think it's the best we can do at this point in time. If you consider the money we earned from him last year in terms of loan fee plus subsidizing his wages, adding on top this loan spell to Roma as well too, we've probably earned nearly 30 million pounds over two seasons, which isn't too bad and hopefully if he gets a permanent move afterwards, he could be collecting close to around like 60 mil plus in total. Getting Lukaku off the wage bill for this season is the most important thing now that we don't have Champions League football. So, you know, it's the best situation that all parties could find right now. Let's not forget the fact that it was only Juventus who were willing to pay the money we wanted, but that depended on Vlaovic leaving first. And Inter Milan were taking forever to find the right package to satisfy us. And they were hoping that if they were the only interested parties, they could capture Lukaku for the price they wanted to buy him for. So, again, you know, this is the consequences you face when your mega money buys don't work out. But at least no more Lukaku talk anymore. So, my friends, this saga is now out of the way. We now discuss the interesting developments surrounding Jared Jalaba and Bayern Munich. Right now, Thomas Tuchel is persuading Bayern Munich to sign them. There were some reservations with the Bayern board around this move. However, they are here to back Thomas Tuchel and Tuchel appreciates Jalaba for his versatility. He can play as a centre-back, full-back and even in midfield. He understands Tuchel's methods. That's the most important thing. With Benjamin Pavard now set to move to Inter Milan, this is now freeing up space for Bayern Munich to sign Jalaba. Now, we rejected an initial loan fee from Bayern for Jalaba as we only said we want a permanent move and now it does seem like Bayern Munich are more than happy to sign him for a permanent price. Now, it was reported by the Evening Standard that originally we've quoted around £50 million for Jalaba which, you know what, I can kind of maybe see it a little bit but realistically we won't get that type of money. Bayern are hoping to buy him for between 25 to 30 million. So let's hope that maybe if we can receive like 35 million at least, that could help us out in the long run. Now, Tuchel is actively holding communication with Jalaba, who is more than happy now to make a move to Bayern Munich. And currently, both Bayern and us are in negotiations to find an agreement to find a sale. To be honest, this would be an amazing move for Jalaba and potentially opens up an England call up now for the Euros for next summer. Now, I've always felt like Jalaba was better than people gave him credit for. The versatility, how he plays with his head up, the technique, his passing ability and range too. Like, this guy is more than good enough to play at a European level. Hence, by your Leipzig, your Inters, your Milans and many European class clubs have been paying attention towards him. But the reality is, you know, FFP cashing in on a homegrown player. A guy coming from our academy. That's going to give us a massive profit on our books. And as we know, we must sell players to fund a move for an attacking player. That's the whole strategy right now. Some may argue, you know, was the sassy necessarily needed when you had a Jalaba, especially if he's going to a Bayern Munich. And, you know, like we could debate forever, but like what are the like major, major differences in like quality and level between either one? You know, I'll let you guys like share your thoughts and opinions behind that in the comment section. Regardless, it seems like Jalaba though is set to leave before deadline day ends. Let's hope that we agree favourable terms for him to get a move to Bayern. 
because if he does leave, I want this guy to have a great career like all the guys that we sell. So that's the Jalabin news out of the way. And now we discuss what is going on in terms of signing attacking players. And I'm starting to get the impression that right now the club don't even know what the plan is right now. We're getting an understanding behind potential options on the shortlist. Lots of rumours are going along right now. I'm going to discuss everything that's been happening over the past weekend and what's coming out today. But to start with things, we did learn that we did make a late attempt for Mohamed Kudus, but by the time we showed our interest, it was too late as Kudus had already committed to West Ham. So I feel that's a really big miss and I still can't believe that we waited so long before deciding to make a move. I mean, it kind of baffles me to be fair with you. We learned that we ended our interest in Brennan Johnson based on the fact that we only wanted to commit to around £40 million and of course Forrest went around £50 million plus and even then, I don't see the utility behind a move for Johnson where his game works in behind, he's a very direct type of player and I just feel like we need a lot more, especially as we're playing against teams that will sit back and defend. And I just don't think Johnson's, you know, technical capacity is high enough to really take our game to a different level. And we also learned that any move now for Bradley Barcola is now over and it's over because Leon originally were open to having Andre Santos arriving to them on loan as a counterweight in this deal. We allowed him to now go to Nottingham Forest and as we're reading in reports, Nottingham Forest are now close to signing and Diddy from Leicester City. So it's just like, you know, this is the risk of course when you allow your young prospects to go out on loan. And a part of me just thinks that we couldn't keep him in the squad this season. I Again, you know, I don't really understand this move, to be fair with you. But regardless, Leon now are not interested in sending Barcola to us because they aren't getting Andre Santos in return. And I think that's more than fair. We are now getting some rumours and inklings and news around other targets on the floor list. And these players are Jaden Sancho. We're looking at Emil Smith role of Arsenal, Ferran Torres and Rafina as well too. I mean, let's start with ML Smith Rowe. Now, reports in the Times today are suggesting that Arsenal are more than open to selling him as we have held like small initial talks over the player's availability. But to be honest with you guys, I don't feel impressed by this whatsoever. Yes, I understand he had like a great individual season during the 21-22 season at Arsenal, but you know, they came fifth. The level of their squad was a lot weaker, wasn't as good. And, you know, since then, you know, injuries haven't been working in this guy's favour. Like, he hasn't played any minutes at all this season. And I think last season he played less than 15 games in total. So, I just don't see the utility behind a move for him. I just kind of feel like it's giving a bit of desperation vibes in that sense. And it's just like, you know, why not just keep maybe a hudson Adoy or Andrin or promote Diego Marrera for now until at least January but hopefully more options open up. I just don't like these forced moves, especially when it's just like, what? we're just going for like any type of cheap Premier League experience for a guy that hasn't really done as much, you know, through no fault of his own over the past two years to fill up a squad position role. And then what? Once players return back, there's no need for him. Like on a personal note, my guys, reports came out today from the club saying that they are looking to like completely stop and end subsidising you know, way fans travel costs right now. I just think to myself, like, how much money does this really cost throughout the season? Yet yeah, clubs will happily, like, waste millions due to desperation. Just like that, instantly, signing, like, maybe B or C tier players. And then, what, the fans then don't even get a little bit of that money their way to help them with their costs? Like, I just, I just don't like that morally, to be fair with you. And it does kind of frustrate me a bit. And listen, this game, in essence, is a sport. It's about competition. Like, you know, on any given day, even a smaller team can beat a bigger team, right? And it doesn't even matter about the individual quality on the field. I just feel like with the resources and all the young players we buy and invest in, if you're struggling, of course, to fill attacking squad options, utilise what you have. The skill of the manager should come out in these moments even more to help find a way to get us through. Because, again realistically we aren't signing any first team option before the window ends right now so why even entertain these despo moves to players that don't have much utility in the long run that's how i see things to be fair with you but to move on we discuss other options like Jaden sancho is it a surprise to me that he's become a guy that's been linked well to keep things real this is purely rumors there's nothing concrete or substantial right now but you can imagine that let's say of kukurea then moves to Man United. Maybe Sancho moves in the opposite direction. Who knows? And to be fair with you, 
Based on how we're currently playing, I think it suits Sancho a lot more than him staying at Man United because I was saying this when he was playing at Dortmund. This guy isn't a classic type of winger. He's a guy that needs that freedom to run between the lines, to play in the half space, to combine and link up, to do those attacking sequences. You know, his skill is about playing in tight spaces to create separation, not beating players over distances. And it goes on to show that, you know, all this like money that Prem clubs spend on like scouting and profiles and all this good stuff, like how do they constantly get it wrong with these big money moves? Like it just completely just baffles me sometimes. But then it goes back to saying, why not just keep Hudson and Doy at least until January where maybe hopefully more options open up on the market. Moving on to Ferran Torres, I think Guy's are an interesting player. You know, he can play all across the attacking lines. He can attack the books. He's very good at receiving progressive passes based on his movement in behind. You know, he's good 1v1. He's a decent player. He is more of like a squad player at Barcelona. But um, again, I kind of feel like we're not looking to sign like the craziest, most braziest options now at the market because who can you really get now? I would understand this if this was like a loan move until the end of the season. I would completely understand that. I wouldn't be too opposed to that because I do think that in Ferran Torres, Prem experience playing at Barca, He's one of those guys that is good enough to play at this level. And if he's a squad option where he can be an option up front, out wide room behind, he could provide some use throughout the season. And obviously to end things on Rafina. Now he's always been one of those like long-term options that we've always kept like wandering eyes over. But I just look at the timing of this news right now. If we were to sign him from Barcelona, I think it's going to cost incredible money. It'll be at a premium right now. Now, I understand that Rafina hasn't really played many minutes this season, like around 40 so. Young 16-year-old in Lamina Yamal is now playing first-team football over him. And Barca are using like a 3-4-2-1 with like Javi and Pedri in behind lever. And Lamina, of course, playing like the wide ring of ball in that type of system. Would Barcelona be so open to selling Rafina and his experience and just completely relying upon a 16 year old to play week in week out? That's just not gonna happen. I mean, physically he's not ready to be playing week in week out of that regardless. And I just think that Barcelona wanna have a strong squad throughout the season and letting Rafina go doesn't make sense unless they decide last minute that they will sacrifice Rafina to then make a move for Joao Felix because as we know Joao Felix is desperate for Barcelona both clubs and parties are interested in making something happen and if Barcelona were to receive a massive cash injection from selling Rafinha for like over his market value of around 60 million euros maybe something could happen but it'll be really interesting to see what updates come out surrounding the story tactically he makes a lot of sense that Prem experience plus he's the 10 slash winger option that we are looking at. Now, it's a shame that we couldn't sign Olise. I think that's a big deal. And to be fair with you, in my opinion, if you're struggling to find an attacking player, don't make any despo moves. Wait until the best possible options open up on the market and then make a move in January or next season if you have to. Like I just feel like we've created so much mess for us over seasons when we've made these hasty panic buys. And then it does involve having to sacrifice certain players. I look at Lewis Hall, for example, where you have to just to satisfy FFP regulations. This is the type of can of worm that you open up for yourself when you, you know, when you think too short term sometimes. So I really am going to trust the board. They've done great things in terms of securing some great players for us. But I hope they pick the best possible options in terms of finding the right type of attacking player. Realistically for myself, signing a loan option for the season is all I really care about. And then we go back again next summer to make something big happen. So my friends, that's the latest news surrounding attacking players. We now end things by discussing the latest reports surrounding Kukurea and a potential move to Man United. Now, of course, Luke Shaw and Malassia are both out and United don't have anyone at left back. On their shortlist is Kukurea, Alonso, Tagliafico and Reguillon as well too. But um, I think maybe Kukurea is their top option. And as we do know right now, there are concrete talks between United and Kukurea over his contract. So if this is a loan fee, I hope it's going to be a substantial loan fee. And if we can get Kukurea off the wage bill for a player where realistically, I just think that there's even less use for him now, now that Ian Matson's here. And I think Matson just really suits what Pochettino needs as like an attacking fullback, who even playing further forward as well too. I'd rather secure 
Matson because they're Matson signs that contracts extension to remain here. And I just feel like Matson has a greater upside over the next few seasons in terms of potential and ability compared to a Kukurea. So invest in these young talents, you know what I mean? I'd rather we do that to be fair with you. I think cashing on Kukurea could be the best thing. Listen, I got a degree of sympathy. Last season was hard for everyone. I just kind of feel like I'm not going to like solely just place the blame on certain players. But now that even options like Levi Cole, who can play that centre-back slash left-back role in which we originally signed Kukurea for, alongside the fact that Badia Shield can do the same thing. It does seem like Kukurea doesn't really have much like uh, life support now at this football club. And if we can find a great deal, potentially with like a, you know, obligation to buy or option to buy near the end, that could be key. And maybe Kukurea in a new environment might be able to shine just a bit more. So my friends, I saw the latest reports coming around. It's going to be a very interesting deadline day because I think there is going to be a surprise that comes out from nowhere. I just hope I'm not going to be disappointed by whatever the surprise is. So my friends, it's going to be more videos out later today and I've got a surprise video that should be coming out tomorrow early too and I know you guys are gonna like this. I've got a journalist coming on so on that note, I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lines TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.